Good morning, everybody, and I hope you guys are doing well. Welcome to Wednesday Morning Devo and Encouragement. I know I'm late. I was trying to figure out how to get it to work here on my phone. don't have my laptop with me. It's at church. <laughs> so, um, thank you. Welcome. And I am grateful to be here in my apartment during quarantine, um, able to have a lot of time to read, to study, to watch some good YouTube videos or shows, catch up. So, get to study the word a little bit this morning from my apartment here. Doing well. Grateful to be feeling much better. Um, so, the title for the day is... Hey, Emily. Hope you're well. Um, the title for the day is The All-Sustaining Love and Goodness of God. So, just two of his qualities. Um, or, I guess... I guess two, two being all sustaining and self sustaining, and then the other one being well, I guess three all sustaining, um, love, love of God and the goodness of God. Three, I would say, um, qualities of God. And so we're going through this study on Wednesday nights. Um, we can't tonight. Also, that's that's another thing. And I tell my students that it's canceled tonight, so that way Fred can fog. Um, What's it called? Fog. Uh, sanitize the whole building. Since I was there a whole lot, I know it's a lot of hardship, but that's what we got to do, unfortunately. So, thanks, guys. But I'm feeling better. So, Psalm 89, verses 19 through 37. Um, the title is The All Sustaining Love and Goodness of God. What's up, Grant? Um, so, let's start in verse 19. It says. Of old you've spoken a vision to the God to your godly one and said, I have granted help to the one who is mighty. And said, I have granted oh, I've granted help to the one who is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from the people. I have found David my servant with my holy, I've, with my holy oil I have anointed him. So that my hand shall be established with him, my arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not outwit him. The wicked shall not humble him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and my steadfast love shall be with him, and in my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He shall cry to me, You are my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. And I will make him the firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. My steadfast love I will keep for him forever. And my covenant will stand firm for him. I will establish his offspring forever and his throne as the days of the heavens. If his children forsake my law and do not walk according to my rules... If they violate my statutes and do not keep my commandments, then I will punish their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. But I will not remove from him my steadfast love or be false to my faithfulness. I will not violate my covenant or alter the word that went forth from my lips once for all. I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His offspring shall endure forever, his throne as long as the sun before me. Like the moon, it shall be established forever, a faithful witness in the skies. Selah. Or stand, Selah being a thing to stand in the presence of God, to wait, to be patient in the presence of God. So, I know a long passage, um, but basically what I got from that, I put it in the title being the all-sustaining love and goodness of God. Um, basically what I get from this little passage here of this promise to David from God, this promise to David, or for us that we can read as this promise to the people of God. Promise to God's elect. I know we hate using that word, um, but the promise to God's sons. Promise to God's sons and daughters. Promise to us as the children of God. All right, And so we see this amazing promise from a bunch of things that he's telling King David here about his throne. And he's using this um, as an amazing promise 
that David can know for the rest of his life about God and about what he has planned for him. And so what he's saying is you don't have to look to yourself for glory. You don't have to look to your own attributes or to your own um, accomplishments for glory or for strength, but you can look to me. You can look to me, your God, who is your strength, who is and who gets all the glory, then I will exalt you is what God says to King David. So you don't have to look to yourself. You don't have to look to what um, accomplishments you can make or what accomplishments that you have made to get glory, to get your own glory, to be exalted, or to feel like you are strong. But you can look to the God of your salvation who already has all the glory in the world and who already is the strongest ever, who could never be stronger, and that He will exalt you because of your praise to Him, because of your love to Him, because He is a good God who exalts us in His great goodness and His great love. So in 18, he says, For our shield belongs to the Lord, our King, to the Holy One of Israel. You belong to the Lord, not to anybody else, not to this world. Christian, you as a Christian do not belong to this world, for we are called to be forejourners. We are called to be ambassadors to this world. We are not called to be of the world, but we are called to be um, transformed by it, transformed by God's rule in this world. And to show the love of God unto this world and to tell of God. But we are not called to be of this world. God calls us out of it, right? He says, of old you spoke in a vision to your godly one. So God is saying this to his godly one, to King David, to give him a promise. To tell him I've chosen you. I've chosen all the people to do a mighty work. And then he says, I found David my servant. I anointed him with my holy oil. God didn't anoint him right with his, by his own hand. He didn't do it by his own hand. But he anoints his people, right? And so he uses people. He uses people all around the world to do what his work. And that is still a work of God. He says, I anointed him. I anointed him. No, it was um, the prophet or yeah, the prophet Samuel who anointed David to be the next king. And it still took a lot of years because Saul was there at the time, right? But God says that I anointed him with my oil. So God places everything in his hands. He puts everything in his power, in his will that is done. For he is all sustaining. He is all ruling. He sustains himself without any need of us. And he sustains this whole world without any need from us as well. Right? So there's nothing that we can do to stop that sustaining power of God. There's nothing that we can do to um, help or keep up the all-sustaining power of God. He still sustains all in all without any help from us, without any hindrance from us either. <clears throat> he says, so that my hand shall be established with him, my arm shall strengthen him. So God is establishing you. God is establishing you and me in his word. Live under his rule and he will establish you. That my hand shall be established. Live under his love and he will establish you with his strong arm. The strongest arm in all the world is that of God. The enemy shall not outwit him and the wicked shall not humble him. Hmm. The enemy shall not outwit him and the wicked shall not humble him. I believe that for only God can humble a man and that he is the one who does that perfectly in perfect time and through the perfect means <clears throat> 23 i will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him <clears throat> 24 my faithfulness and my steadfast love shall be with him and in my name shall his horn be exalted <clears throat> horn being as his uh his crown i believe as, as a measure of his his rule his um 
rule as king. So that saying that he will exalt him because the faithfulness of God and his steadfast love shall be with him, shall never leave us. God is so many times in the word tells us that he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And that is so true because the more we know about the qualities of God, his self-sustaining, his love, his faithfulness, steadfast love that will never, ever leave us. We know that that is true because God never changes. His love never changes. It is great and it is always great towards us. It's so great. It will never be less for it can never be greater. It will never go away for it has always been there for us. It's amazing. I will set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He shall cry to me. You are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I love that passage there. You are my father, my God, the rock of my salvation. Know who God is and proclaim it daily. It's a thing that we can do. And it's a thing that is so powerful for us. It's so um, encouraging for our lives. It's so encouraging and reviving for our soul to speak the promises of God, to speak and proclaim who God is. Right? That's, that's, that's worship. That is worship. That is prayer. And so you can do that any time throughout the day. You are my Father, my God, the rock of my salvation. 27, I will make him, God's saying, I will make him the firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. The promise to King David here. <clears throat> make him firstborn, highest, the kings of the earth. So he will exalt him. He will do his will. To place you where he needs to place you. To do his good. To do his will. For the goodness of God and his steadfast love endures forever. And so his goodness will do his work in you. Be in his love. Live in his love. Live in his will. To continue praying. My steadfast love I will keep for him forever. He says this again. My steadfast love again I will keep forever with him never ending and my covenant will stand firm for him his covenant the promises of god that he has made to him through all this will stand firm for him god will never back down from a promise never back down from a covenant for he is the great gift giver and he will never never ever let anyone take that from him he always will be I will establish his offspring forever and his throne as the days of the heavens. God is going to give David all his throne, all his children, throne for the days of the heavens so that never on earth will there be somebody who is not an offspring of King David who is in the earth. I will establish his offspring forever so that his offspring, all the sons of David, will be as the days of the heavens, always until God comes again. Promise of God. He says in 30, as a reminder though, or a uh, thing to, to keep, to, keep um, to look at. It says, if his children though forsake my law, do not walk according to my rules, if they violate my statutes and do not keep my commandments, then I will punish their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. So he does say that you can't get away with anything, though. You just can't get away with not following my rules, not following my law. And if, you, if they violate my uh, statutes, if they do not keep my commandments, the sons, of, the sons of David that I said will be established forever. They can't, they can't just not follow me. He said he still will establish them because that's not what God is going against his word. But what God is saying is that I will punish them with their, for their transgression. I will have to do something with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. But he says I will punish them or I will discipline them because the great discipline of God is the great true discipline. It is the lovely discipline. It's the perfect discipline where he disciplines his son out of love every single time. Disciplines his children out of love every single time. Out of love, out of his goodness, out of his mercy, out of his grace, he disciplines us. 
that it's never out of vain conceit or anger or malice in his heart. It is out of his great goodness and love and grace that he disciplines us to know that it's a good thing for us and to love us continually, not to see us hurt ourselves or to do wrong. He says 33, but I, but whenever there's a but, that's but God. (laughs) <laughs> but God, he says, I will not remove from him my steadfast love or be false to my faithfulness. I will not remove from him my steadfast love or be false to my faithfulness. For God is good. Amen. He says, I will not remove it. It doesn't change his promise. He disciplines, he punishes, but he does not change his promise. I will not violate my covenant or alter the word that went forth from my lips. It is true, it is always true, never returns void. Once for all, I love that wording, once for all, I have sworn for my holiness, I will not lie to David. His offspring shall endure forever, his throne as long as the sun before me. He's saying this promise And he says, once for all, I love that, once for all, Jesus Christ was nailed to the cross. Once for all, he rose from the dead. Once for all, the words of God will never return void. He says he's sworn to his holiness. That is true for him and it never, it is permanent, his holiness, his goodness, permanent. says, like the moon, it shall be established forever, a faithful witness in the sky. All the offspring of David will be forever until the sun is before me. As long as the sun is before God. As long as the sun shines. So we can take note and we can lie in awe of these promises of God all throughout Scripture. This is Psalms 89. It's such a, it's a, like 15 verses here, but amazing passage to know of the great all-sustaining love and goodness of God, of his faithfulness, that his word never returns void, that he is a discipliner, that he disciplines out of love and his grace and goodness that never ever change. And that doesn't change his promises either, that his goodness and his um, exalting establishment will still take place. So we pray, Lord, that we stay in your good goodness, that we stay in your rule all the days of our lives, that we continue to walk in your rules, walk in your statutes, walk in your commandments, and walk in your grace because we know that your grace is so good and so great for us that it never leaves us, that your goodness is everlasting, that his love is everlasting, that even if you cannot, because you cannot walk continually in all of his statutes perfectly, only one man could, but we know that the goodness of God and the grace of God is greater than any of our failures. And so, Lord, we pray that today that we just praise you and that we worship you, that we know you more and know what your great attributes are, that you never depart from them, that you discipline out of love, that you, that you desire for us to know you more, Lord God, that your love is so great and so faithful, that your goodness is so faithful and everlasting, that you sustain yourself. Lord, we just praise you this morning. Lord, let us worship you and be a lead. Let your word lead us to worship you every single day. Keep those in great health, Lord, with a virus and all around the world with everything growing. Lord, we know that you're in control always. We praise you and have a great day. Have a great day, guys. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the promises of God lead you to worship. In Jesus' name. Amen. Have a good one.